Hi, welcome back. I've been working slowly on restoring the power saw. Hopefully, if you watched any of the previous videos, you will, uh, you'll see the condition it was in and some of the work that I've, I've been doing. And uh, one of the parts that I was looking at the other night was the, um, I'm going to call it the cam. This is the part that takes the rotation from the motor and it converts it into reciprocating motion, which uh, drives the, the hacksaw, the blade, back and forth. And one of the problems we had was the original drive shaft, this goes in there. If I can get close, there's the camera, you can see that the surface of this is terrible. It looks like it's been welded and filled in, in places. And um, the, the nut that secured it at the end here wasn't completely attached, or, or rather it wasn't tightened up correctly. And uh, as a result, that caused the ball that it sat in in this part to um, be all marred and um, damaged inside. So the other day, I put it on the, in the forge jaw and cleaned up the ball. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. So it's now nice and clean inside, nice and neat. The only downside to that is it affected the, the diameter of the bore. So the drive shaft no longer fits. So if we look at the new drive shaft, which I made, nice and clean, nice and shiny, you can see there's a taper on there. It's approximately two and a half degree taper. Now, when I cleaned up this bore, as I say, I put it in the fore jaw and aligned the compound to get the approximate angle. Because of the damage inside, it wasn't that easy to actually work out the angle it should be. But I worked out the, the approximate angle, set the compound, and then opened up the bore just by 15, 20 thou. The only downside to that, as I've just said, is it now affects this. So I put this back on the lathe and... I cut this angle using exactly the same settings that I used for the compound for that. So that now means that both of these are at the right angle, which is good. Downside is, there's the drive shaft. If I put this over the top, you can see it protrudes that far. Let's get the focus, there we go. So it's protruding about half an inch, about 12 millimeters, 13 millimeters, way too far. So, how do you get around that? So my solution was to make a tapered shim. This is approximately half a millimeter thick 19 thou or thereabouts something like that. I forget the exact number, but it's, it's half a millimeter thick. I know that much and that Goes over there Again this part and I can get it off This part was cut with the compound Still in exactly the same position. So the angles of all of the parts the angles the bore in there the angle on the taper here and the taper of the shim they all should now match. So if we put the shim over there and reposition the cam, you can now see that it lines up. Okay. So with the um, with the washer on there and the nut, that will now pull it into place, and it should align perfectly. So very quick update. This. Um, this time but um, I'm making progress slowly the next part is to machine the or the bushing for the drive shaft so if I take if I take that off the drive shaft should go through there however it, there's a little bit of play as you can see and, uh, and anyone watching the old videos of the restoration of the um, the update can 
can see how wobbly the saw is so obviously it should not be that loose even the old cam or even the old drive shaft that one's so marred up it was a pain to get it out you can actually see the damage on the drive shaft you can see that it it had obviously run dry for a hell of a long time and um, it was just destroyed it was destroying itself and likewise on the inside you can see the damage that's on the bushing so new one of those we have the drive shaft we have that board out so it's getting close thank you very much for watching